Silver Stand Up Award, which I did. Yeah, I know, it's brilliant. And I couldn't wait to ring my wife to tell her I phoned her up after the gig. You never guess what? I've only gone and won it. Oh, that's brilliant. She, that is brilliant. What did you get? Trophy? Oh, fantastic. Drove home two hours later in the room showing you the trophy. So is this what you won? Yeah. Anything else? No? I have been on the website. Right? When were you going to tell me about the £500 cash prize? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what our relationship has sunk to, basically. No trust whatsoever. You know, no trust. And then um, we, we celebrated Valentine's Day back in February. And, and I'm still romantic, a bit like Ian. I've been with my wife for 21 years. And uh, I phoned the florist and said, can I order some flowers, please? They said, yeah. And he said, would you like a card? I said, yes, I would. He said, what do you want on the card? I said, I'll just put to Lynn Love Nick. She said, would you like a kiss on the bottom? I said, that would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> what time do you want me there? <laughs> and she said, no, I'm in the car. I said, yeah, I know. I'm a comedian, I'm just making a joke. And quick as a flash, she said, I bet you don't get many gigs. Which, <laughs> <laughs> It's not the first time I've been with that. I was at the BW garage at the weekend looking at a new polo in burnt orange. Sales lady came up and said, do you like the colour? I said, actually I do. She said, I call it Marmite colour. I said, no, it's definitely burnt orange. <laughs> she went, no, no, no. I meant you either love it or hate it. I said, yeah, I know. I'm a comedian. I'm just making a joke. And she just went, oh, I walked off. <laughs> but, um, we have been married 21 years, and, and my wife said to me around the family close to me, she said, can you remember how we first met? Well, now, by that accent, you would have realised I am married to a lady who hails from Bangladesh. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, it was a long time ago. Um, how, how do we think she you had an advert in the paper? In fact, you had two. We only responded to the one. I didn't know that. I put a heart, an advert in the Lonely Hearts column. I said, why did you only respond to the one? She said, well, in the second one, you put your height. <laughs> and that put me off, right? Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> I didn't realise how heightist she was. But about a week after we'd been together, I suggested we go for a day to Alton Towers. She said, well, not much point you could, is there? <laughs> 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 well, I came home another week later. She said, do you know what she said? I've done some research. And you're only nine inches taller than the largest emperor penguin I've ever caught. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone through the same routine every night since we were married. She goes up to bed, I come up to bed. Have you turned the TV off? Yes. At the wall? Yes. Have you locked the back door? Yes. Have you locked the front door? Yes. At the bottom? Yes. At the top? <laughs> <laughs> and I guess about November, she says, oh, I ain't to this time of year, do you? Why's that? Well, at the bottom, but the bed's always cold, isn't it? I don't know, my legs are moving down. To be honest with you. Um, she's, not, she's not a happy woman, it was her birthday. Um, not today. Uh, <laughs> I got her a spa day, that was wrong. Um, turns out she hates grocery shopping. <laughs> She said, she said there's, there's no romance in our relationship anymore, is there? I said, what do you mean? She said, well, maybe when we've been intimate, it'd be nice to have some music playing. I took that on board, and I've got to be honest, it was quite hard finding a track um, that only lasted 26 seconds. But <laughs> I sorted it, it was fine. So I put the first track on, Make It With You by Bread. That was, you know, do you know, hey, 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 to be honest, I think my choice of song number two, um, the theme for Match of the Day. <laughs> <laughs> and just at the end bit where it goes, 
that, 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 that. And on practice and on that, I coordinated slapping her ass and shouting goal. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, apparently that's bought the mood. Um, so they're, they're, there's no surprises in our relationship either. So the other night, she was in the bathroom getting ready. I went to the bedroom, turned the lights off, lit some candles, hid under the bed. And when she came in, I just grabbed her ankles. And, <laughs> <laughs> and apparently that wasn't the surprise she had in her <laughs> <laughs> but, but she, she did surprise me just before Christmas. She said, you have remembered, you're picking me up from my work school tomorrow. Now, that did come as a surprise because uh, she's self-employed and works from home. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that's, that's fine. So I turned up at the allocated time, she got in the car, and all I said was, you had a nice time? Are you saying I'm drunk? Oh, <laughs> no, but, but clearly you've had a drink. And then we had silence for five minutes, and then it started. I, I don't think you love me. Oh, God, here we go. In fact, I don't think you ever love me. So, well, I do, I have. I can't guarantee going forward what's going to happen, but you know, what <laughs> Well, if you let me, you can prove it right now. I said, I'm not going to do that. She said, you can make love to me in this car. I said, well, that's not going to happen. She said, give me one good reason. I said, well, I'll give you three. I said, number one, it's four o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> number two, we're still outside Weatherspoons in the middle of Gloucester. And number three, we've got your girlfriend Chris in the back because we're giving her a little dough. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing, right? She's got a girlfriend, they do loads together. I haven't got a problem with that. At the end of April, they're going away for seven nights on a cruise to Norway. Seven nights away together. I want one night away with my girlfriend. Oh, the three. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, we did uh, a bit like him, we did. We did dry January this year, and we still drank, just no sex, but it was... <laughs> <laughs> it, um, it was drink related. What happened on Christmas Day, I had one red wine too many, fell asleep at the dinner table at four o'clock, and she said she felt embarrassed, humiliated. The other people in the hotel dining room where we were staying for to them. But that sort of prompted me to think about some New Year's resolutions and like maybe to stop stop drinking or cut down on the drink. And the other thing I just thought, well, I need to be a better person, I need to be more woke. So I'm quite quite angry to be quite honest. But um, I don't want to tell you, I've got I've got issues, so it's gonna be difficult. I have got issues, well. Let's use their proper term, shall we? Stepchildren. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're, not, they're not even children, they're 39 and 40. Um, one's normal and the other one's not. She's an anti vaxxer. You don't know what goes in the vaccine. I met her when she was 15. She was doing so much skunk. From, it's unbelievable. And she's very. She's very worldly, she's very mindful of what people are called. And we were having a little chat at Christmas, and I stupidly used the word Eskimo. Oh my God, she went off at once. She was more angry than a cat that's just found out it belongs to a West Ham footballer. Right? That's, that's, <laughs> how, that's how angry she was. I said, Leah, it's just a word, it's just something that my generation used. It's discriminatory. I said, no, it's not. It's just the way she said, the thing is you don't understand discrimination. I said, sorry? She said, you don't understand discrimination. I said, you are joking, I'm ginger. <laughs> <laughs> I applied for a gig in Bristol before Christmas. It said, acts wanted, particularly those of LGBT persuasion or POC. I phoned them up. I said, I'm interested in the gig. They said, are you LGBT? I said, no, I'm not. They said, are you POC? I said, I don't know what's this animal. They said, person of colour. I said, I am. They said, what colour are you? I said, ginger. They put the phone down. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I remember like when I was a kid, oh, it was the names calling that are probably affected me more than anything. Pop and Mob, Ginger Nut, Duracell, you little ginger wanker. And uh, I can remember saying, Dad, just... <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't just my father. I came back, I came back home we just gone back to school after after Christmas, and it was like January 1963, I think it was five or something, you do the math. And, and I went and I saw my mum. I said, Mum? She said, what? I said, well, all the other boys in my class were talking about the presents they had on Christmas Day. She said, and? I said, well, I didn't get any, did I? And she looked at me straight in the eye and said, no, you didn't. And that's because Santa don't stop for ginger kids. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. 
it sounds harsh. I've got two ginger kids. I'm not spending a penny on one Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic, to be honest. Um, but I'm sort of mindful that we do live in a very politically correct world these days, you know, and you, you've got to be mindful of what you say up here. And I'll just give you a couple of examples before I go. About a year ago, Biddeford in North Devon, historically, it's always been known as the little white town because of its whitewashed houses. Like, somebody has decided that's offensive, that's racist. They may have to have that title removed from all their signs. People in Whitehaven shit themselves. Um, <laughs> I've got to be honest, that joke normally gets a far better laugh. <laughs> and you've been really good up to that point. And then you just let yourselves down. <laughs> but just a little bit closer to home, I went to my local Greg's last week and said, oh, can I have, uh, I'll have that college pasty. She said, oh, I can't tell you that. Well, is there something wrong with you? She said, no, but I can't tell you it as a college pasty because we had a network from head office to say, we can't call it the Cornish pasty because it's not made in Cornwall. I said, what is it? She said, we have to call it the traditional pasty. I said, what's in it? She said, meat, potato and veg. The bloke behind me said, I'm not to a lead. I said, where are you off to? He said, well, I want two apples cakes and a Danish pastry. <laughs> <laughs> so I turned back round and I said, so it's exactly the same as the Cornish pasty. She said, yeah, exactly the same. Do you want it? I said, no. As a matter of principle, I don't. She said, do you want something else? I said, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll have, um, I'll have a cheese and ham sandwich and white cake. And she went, racist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you've been delightful. Thank you very much for listening. Good night.